Let's talk about 10 things that you can do to work both smarter and faster as a 3D artist. These are things that I think will help whether you're working professionally or you're just trying to increase your speed and capability when it comes to completing your own personal art projects. In my time working as a freelancer, I've often sold myself as the guy who can get the job done fast, when it's just as equally about how smart and efficient you are with the time you spend on any given project. All right, so let's jump right into it. The first thing I would say is to start with something simple. A lot of design depends on exploration, and a lot of my larger projects have all started from a collection of smaller designs and smaller projects that I've built up over time. It's like sketching in 2D. A lot of bigger illustrations start with a simple sketch or concept, and it works the same way in 3D as well. Rather than always sitting down and feeling like you have to commit to a larger project, find some way to try and rapidly iterate through different designs to find what works and what doesn't. This is a very good way to keep yourself from feeling daunted by the process of getting started on a new project. The next tip is something that I've talked about extensively in a lot of the videos I create on this channel, but that's to have a workflow. You want to develop a consistent workflow of tools and processes that you go through in creating whatever sort of designs or artwork that you create. This means that you have a game plan of all the steps that you're gonna go through to see this project through to completion. So let's use what we've covered most extensively on this channel, and that's weapon modeling. So let's say you need to create a weapon for a video game and you want to lay out all the steps in your workflow that you need to go through in order to take this model through to completion. So first off, you're going to need to gather enough reference to know that you're going to create the model accurately. From there, you're going to start in 3D probably with a basic blockout. That way that you know that all the proportions of your model are going to be correct. From there, you need to start refining all those parts until eventually you've created a high poly model. From there, you'll need to downres and create your low poly model, which will then have to be UV unwrapped so you can start creating your textures and materials. This will involve completing both the texture baking and texture painting process. After that, you'll either have to export it into whatever video game engine that you're using, or create whatever portfolio renders if this is a personal project of your own. So once you have a workflow, it's a good idea to stick with what works, at least on a single given project. But as you move on, it's a good idea to look back at your previous projects and to see what areas that you can improve on. As you continue to create more projects, chances are is that you'll be able to identify places in your workflow where things either get tedious, repetitious, or difficult, and you'll want to look for ways to improve those. So how do you do that? One simple answer is to start investing in learning the sort of artwork that you want to create. As you surely already know, there are a ton of resources readily available across YouTube or through paid tutorials. And while there are tons of great free resources out there, if you see something at a price that you think will help you to improve your workflow, I would definitely say it's a worthwhile investment. Another big way to improve your workflow is to start using more add-ons. I've talked a lot about add-ons in the past and how instrumental they are in helping to decrease the amount of time spent on the most repetitious parts of 3D modeling. Some of these include Hard Ops, Box Cutter, UV Pack Master, and things like Retopo Flow for the retopology process. A lot of the add-ons that I've talked about in the past for UV unwrapping, such as Text Tools or UV Packmaster, I would consider near crucial for the game asset design pipeline, as these add-ons allow access to things that are either difficult or not readily available in vanilla Blender. The next thing you can do to improve your workflow is something that you should naturally be doing as you're completing more projects, and that's to build up a library of assets. No doubt, as you're completing more projects, you'll be collecting more and more assets over time, from textures, decals, materials, sculpting brushes, things that you can use across multiple projects. In fact, Blender 3.0's asset library feature is probably one of the things I'm more excited about in the upcoming Blender updates because of how it allows for quick access to the tools that I would frequently use across multiple projects. While I've previously mentioned the reference gathering process, it's hard for me to describe just how useful of a tool good reference can be. Whether you're creating something from the real world or an imaginative design, good reference is there to keep you grounded and focused on the vision of what this project should be. 
I would also recommend that you learn to diversify the reference that you gather. If you're looking to create a real world object, gather plenty of reference for that object. However, you may also want to create other categories of reference for things such as material design, animations, or functional use reference. The next tip I have is to always feel free to try new software. Even if you are going to stick to just Blender and Substance Painter for your 3D art projects, I encourage you to try as many different programs as possible. Basically, every software out there allows for a 30-day free trial, so all it costs is time. You may find that it is super useful to you and your workflow. You may not. However, it can also help to gain a better understanding of how tools and workflows operate in different programs as well. This can conversely give you a better understanding or idea of how you can improve your own workflow with the current programs that you're using. So if you're curious about a program, go ahead and give it a try. And while you should always be looking to improve your workflow, it's also important to learn to power through the repetition, because no matter how efficient you get, there's no doubt going to be portions of your workflow that are tedious and time consuming. So learn to just sit back, relax, shut off part of your brain, maybe listen to a podcast, and just enjoy the process. But Try not to fall into procrastination, as I find this is often when I'm most susceptible into drifting off into other things. But hey, maybe that's just me. And with all that talk of working smart and fast, the final tip that I have for you is to take a break. Because while you might just want to smash through an entire project and complete everything in one sitting, it's important to give yourself a few strategic breaks so that you can relax and come back to your project with a fresh set of eyes. Doing so will greatly help to improve the final product of whatever it is that you're working on. From helping to reduce the amount of small errors that might get overlooked while you're working for long periods of time, to more importantly, decreasing or avoiding the burnout that you might feel at the end of a project. Now, this can come in the form of small breaks that you take over the course of your daily work, such as spending an hour to two hours sharply focused on a given project and then giving yourself a 10 to 20 minute break to stretch, get more coffee, eat a snack, and then come back to your project and work for another hour or two. Or this can be a much needed day off, to spend an entire day where you do not open, you do not look at, you do not touch the project in any way, and then you come back to it the next day with a completely fresh outlook. So go ahead and take a break. And while you're at it, maybe go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also consider checking out my Discord. There's a lot of awesome stuff in there. We're currently running a community challenge in there, and in the next video I'll be announcing the winner of the Cursed Weapons Challenge, and hopefully getting to announce the theme of the challenge that will be coming up after that. So be sure to check the Discord for updates regarding the next challenge, Otherwise, thanks for watching, like and subscribe.